1939 was the first, Kerry won the replay. 1951 was the second, Mayo won, and went on to win the All-Ireland, beating Meath in the final. Is that an omen for Mayo? I can tell you we've had a very warm welcome here in Limerick. Logistical arrangements have been top class. The pitch is in excellent conditions. There's a strong breeze blowing from left to right as we look at it. Mayo won the toss, and they've decided to use that wind advantage in the opening 35 minutes. Everybody anticipating, hoping that we can get something like what we got in the second half, which was undoubtedly the best football match we got so far in 2014. If we get a repeat, we'll all be happy. But who will be the happiest of all, Mayo or Kerry, in the All-Ireland Football Final 2014? Fasten up your safety belts. Hang on. We're on the journey yet again. Breaking ball off Johnny Buckley. Here comes Donald Vaughan inside the uh, Kerry 45-metre line. Backfires Barry Morn, sending it to Andy Morn, no relation, trying to get inside the cover. First three of the evening is for the male captain, Andy Morn. Yeah, and I, was, I was nearly going to say, Marty, I think it's a mistake by James Horn to start Andy Morn, uh, bringing on the artillery so early in the game. He's so effective coming off the bench this year, but collects the first ball and that diagonal ball, and I think Mayo will be looking for a lot of those diagonal balls today into him, and he will sit on the edge of that square. Killian O'Connor, top scorer, of course, from Mayo in this championship with three goals and 31 points, including three penalties. Two scored in New York and one, of course, crucial one last Sunday in Crook Park. Taps it over the bar. Mayo are up and running in the Gaelic grounds in Limerick. And just touching on one of the points there, I think Colin was making in the studio about the pitch and the dynamic of the game. What you will see here, Marty, is being able to get the ball into the full forward line much quicker than you can in Crow Park. One kick will put it in there in Crow Park. That doesn't happen. Barry Moore. Diving on the ball there, gathering cleanly and obviously legally. Kevin McLaughlin. Three Kerry players around him. Cormac Riley, match official from Danny May, blows the whistle. Gives a free. Yeah, there was not much of that there, Marty. It was just Kevin McLaughlin pushing away the player, not too dissimilar to Lee Keegan, except with the hand this time this week. Short ball for as Jason Doherty. Comes for as Lee Keegan. Ball inside to Killian O'Connor and Jason Doherty. Johnny Buckley, backtracking. Aidan O'Mahony vacuuming up. Killian Young. Has to uh, go back far as Paul Murphy. Dunnick Watch. Good pressure by Mayo. David Moore had an outstanding first half in Crow Park. Michael Ganey is under severe pressure here. Referee gives the man in possession the benefit of the doubt. He's pushing unnecessarily by Colin Boyle. But it is a free for Kerry. Yeah, and the game very tight even at the beginning because when Kerry looked up to deliver that ball long, there was nobody there. You had Odunahu and Kieran Donny on the edge of the square and 60, 70 yards, and that's why they played short. But playing the shot from this ground is going to mean it's going to be exceptionally physical. More descent possibly means more gaining of ground. Referee says no. David Warren was the player that was looking for it. Morris Deegan is the linesman, as you can see, at the far side, right beside David there. Bit of running repairs for the Kerner Rahalis map. Aidan O'Mahony. Peter Crowley. Full back, centre back, combining. Sending in a low shot. And the goalkeeper, Robbie Henley, had to be alert. Keith Higgins. It was a bit adventurous from that distance. But the goalkeeper passed the test. Seamus O'Shea. Stopped by Johnny Buckley. Some might say unfairly. Here comes the man himself, Kieran Donaghy. And it's a free for Kerry. And while Kieran Donaghy is out there, there's now only one player on the full forward line. That's James O'Donnell, who had two men marking him. And he's running, he's really ducking, diving, looking for that quick ball, but there's no target there for the free taker. David Moore goes short. Fires Anthony Marr. Back fires Moore again. 
Wonderful atmosphere, I have to say, here at the Gaelic Grounds. Bourne touches the ball on the ground. Referee spotted it as well. Free for mail. Both, both sets of players running into tackles with the ball at the minute. Just they don't have targets when they look up to deliver. Kevin McLaughlin, Andy Bourne making a great run. Goes the opposite direction over towards Killian O'Connor. It's being double marked at the moment. Loses possession. Down goes bravely Paul Murphy. Quick feed for his David Morn. On first Killian Young, and here comes the kingdom. It's Paul Ganey. Making a run, James O'Donoghue. Still Paul Ganey. Still Paul Ganey takes a shot, and it just goes to the wrong side of the post. And let's be honest, considering his approach work, he did the hard bit, but the finish was a little bit poor. Yeah, and he got that opportunity because Barry Moran slipped just at a crucial time while he was tackling him. Oh, and that was a close one. I don't think that was expected coming into that, but well gathered, very well gathered. Robbie Henley is going to have to wait for the kick out to, to be taken because Cormac Riley is going to have a word with possibly Shane Enright and Killian O'Connor. And down he wandered now between midfield and full forward line and the Mayo full back line and the Mayo full on the Kerry full forward line more or less lining out as they are on the programs and the man marking again Keith Higgins with that job at number 15 and Keith Higgins job was probably even a bit more difficult today Marty because Don he is in there and and or Dunn who doesn't have to be the main target for the primary possession he would take watching. So Killian O'Connor and Shane Enright as you just saw are now both on yellow as a result of this little interaction kick out from Bobby Hennel Barry Moran's height obviously a factor in James Horn's decision to play him in the middle of the field with James O'Shea here's Dunica Walsh work rate can never be questioned David Moran is available if Anthony Marr needs him long ball against the wind remember Kieran Donaghy underneath it, knocks it down to Paul Ganey, oh, just, was it just a little touch, and Ganey was home, and dry surely for a goal. Kevin McLaughlin, Johnny Buckley is doing great backtracking, still McLaughlin. Ball is aimed for Andy Moore, and there's two Kerry lads there, one is the team captain from Dr. Crokes in Killarney. Fionn Fitzgerald ends up with Michael Ganey, Danica Walsh to Ganey. Two carry men up front. Here's one of them. James O'Donoghue. Keith Higgins with it. Good challenge by Higgins. O'Donoghue recovers. Great tackling by Higgins. Getting the hand in. Back out far as Kieran Donahue. O'Donoghue. Johnny Buckley coming through the middle. Two carry players available to his right. Goes back for his James O'Donoghue. He's going to hit it with his left and it's left and wide as it turns out for Kerry Unus second wide unusual for him he'd normally put those over he had that little opportunities and great players like him can just snap at those opportunities but Keith Higgins doing again the, what he did last Sunday just keeping the player outside him and that's all he has to do while the defence gets back in cover he's centimetres away from a clear run through for Paul Ganey you can see his frustration in our replay and at the moment, Marty, you'd have to say that both defences are on top. It's very tight when the ball goes in there for either forward line. Robbie Henley, Aidan O'Shea got a touch. Here comes Peter Crowley. Donald Vaughan and Aidan O'Shea coming through the middle. David Moore. Seamus O'Shea, his opposite marker. Still Moore. Needs somebody outside, but the referee's whistle is blown. It's a chance for Kerry. Yeah, great run, by, great run by David Moore and he just stayed going and he did what James Adelino couldn't do that was just get inside the man and then take the space and the foul was nearly inevitable at that stage I think the referee allowed him a little bit of a, a play on there but the free coming in the end and this should be a handy one for Kerry Scored one point last Sunday in Croke Park as it turned out from a free although he won a lot of 50-50 balls with Jerk Africa and in the replay, he's just scored his first point as well. Sides level for the first time here in the Gaelic Rats. And so far, you'd have to say, out around the middle of the park, where there is a deluge of players that may or carry coming up with most of the possession at the minute and getting forward uh, quite well, quite fast as well. They have two options, move it fast forward. Robbie Henley's kick out blocked by Paul Ganey, and Henley did well to recover. 
Keith Higgins. Nerve wracking moment for a moment. I was, wait, a male I, was, fan. I was waiting for a disaster there, Martin. So was I. Aiden O'Mahony. Dunica Watch. Jason Doherty putting the hand in, trying to dislodge the ball, and indeed, there's a perfect example of it. It's Lee Keegan. Down first, Killian O'Connor. Shane Enright seemed to be straight off the ground, but Enright got the benefit of the doubt. Killian O'Connor still battling hard. Michael Ganey needs a little bit of support. It's available with Jason Doherty, and it's a free from mail. Killian O'Connor just a little bit nonchalantly going for that ball there, but it was picked up by Shane Enright. It's Paul Murphy. David Moore. Anthony Marr. Two boys had a wonderful first half. Marr's pass is poor. Dunn Fitzgerald is there. Killian Young. Peter Crowley is in front of us in the stand here, but he's being well marked at the moment by Kevin... McLaughlin, good run by Killian Young. Here's Peter Crowley, he cleverly fists it to himself almost. His challenge on Crowley resulted in a free, which was quickly taken. The referee has said there was a head injury there to Peter Crowley, so he's blown his whistle. Yeah. and Crowley needs some attention Crowley a little disgruntled with that if we saw that again Marty you, you would think that Peter Crowley just charged with his head yeah he did I mean the player stood up uh, I think it was the collision that gave him the free so in fairness to Colin Boyle he stood his ground which you're entitled to do so I think it was just the collision that allowed him the free and Colin Crowley Peter Crowley I should say is up and well and the free going to be taken by Johnny Buckley and Kerry find it very difficult to find forwards at the minute every time they look up there's too much space between them and delivering the ball Johnny Buckley Michael Ganey was looking for a free <laughs> the referee felt that Johnny Buckley picked the ball off the ground and I wouldn't initially disagree with him but let's have a look at it yeah, he went to get well. He handled it. There. I think it wasn't Johnny Buckley. It was uh, Michael actually Ganey. Michael Ganey who, while falling, just hit, hit the ball on the ground. Donald Vaughan challenged by Johnny Buckley. Seamus O'Shea equally under pressure from Dunica Walsh. Good pressure by Kerry. David Moore to Kieran Donny. Tangini Ma front of the post. And the ball is wide again. The shooting by Kerry is poor. Yeah, it's very poor. That was exceptionally poor by Anthony Marr because he was put into the clear by Dunhe and well put into the clear on the right side of the park with his right foot and managed to put that wide. It would, would have been be much easier to score. Look how long it's been since Mayo scored. 11 and a half minutes. Dunhe to watch. It's almost a replica of last Sunday, six days ago, where Kerry looked impressive in the opening quarter of an hour. Here's James O'Donoghue, Keith Higgins with him. O'Donoghue makes an angle, shoots and scores. He is the man. There is no doubt about it. Kerry 2, Mayo 1. Yeah, a super score by James O'Donoghue and he had to kick it so high over the player and so over the bar because he is being well backed by Keith Higgins and you see there the two options that Kerry have. Long into Donoghue or sharp and snappy into O'Donoghue. Both of them lethal options. going back together Killian Young there's a push on the back however so it's going to be a free for Mayo and the delay here really giving Kerry an opportunity to set up Anthony Maher off screen back to the right hand side just dropping right back into the pocket there Seamus O'Shea going for the long ball over first Barry Moore but it was just a little bit too strong Remember Mayo playing with a very strong breeze. I was out on the pitch earlier, and it is literally down the middle. It is, yeah, and you see the effect of it there, that ball going wide. But, you know, what maybe the viewers can't see is that the movement on the Kerry forward line compared to the movement on the Mayo forward line is just it's incomparable because Mayo are not really making those jacking runs. The first one we saw of Andy Moore in the beginning of the game, we haven't seen one since. Brian Kelly's kick out is aimed at Johnny Buckley. Shane Enright looking for a runner outside. 
Jan Fitzgerald provides it. Michael Ganey certainly has a great engine. He covers an awful lot of ground. David Moore. Ganey available again. Great pressure by Lee Keegan. Shane Enright. Peter Crowley. Back to Enright. Good play by the corner back. Paul Ganey. James O'Donnell is inside. He's about to pull the trigger. Here it comes. And the ball is wide. It is the fourth wide of the match for Kerry. And their shooting boots are not on in this first half. No, but actually they're terrible wides as well. What a great pop ball through to Dunhu. Look at Donahue on the left hand side of the goal post, waiting for it, screaming for it, and annoyed that he didn't get it. And Dunhu pleading with the referee for something. I don't know what. He should have put that over the bar. Referee Cormac Riley again is halting the kick out. He's being informed by his linesman. And it's Peter Crowley and Aidan O'Shea that he wants to have a word with. Fergal Kelly from Longford and Morris Deegan are the two linesmen, and you can see them on their little microphones uh, that they have attached. Yeah, I think there was very little to that, Marty. I think both players just doing a little, doing a little bit of pulling and dragging certainly didn't warrant any cards. Just interesting, Kerry have had seven scoring chances, four wides. Mayo have had about one, and have only shot one wide. And we've 15 minutes gone. David Moore. Diagonal ball is in for James O'Donoghue. Keith Higgins. They're really going to know each other quite well. Oh, Higgins did well. Great anticipation. Good reading of the game. But then he passes. Is a ball in. It's an easy ball for David Moore. Kieran Donny. First option is to look to his left. Peter Crowley. Who's coming on the outside? It's Michael Ganey. Under a little bit of pressure. It's a little bit short. Robbie Henley obviously thought there was a deflection and prevented it from uh, going out over the end line and out for 45. Yeah, it was a deflection. Robbie did the right thing there. Barry Moore. Cullum Boyle. Jason Doherty. Backfires Boyle again. Alan Dillon. Feeds Lee Keegan. Seamus O'Shea. To Brother Aid. Turns. And that is dropping. It's still alive. It's Kelly O'Connor. Is he brought down inside penalty. the last rectangle? That looks like a penalty to me. It is. Yes, yeah, has to be a penalty, Marty. Ball dropped inside. An innocuous ball by Aidan O'Shea. Poor ball by Aidan O'Shea, but looks how it turns out. What an opportunity for Mayo to get going in the game because they really haven't ignited yet. Full credit to Killian O'Connor. He never took his eye off it. Won a 50-50 ball, a dirty ball as they say. Caught it cleanly. Shane Enright brought him down. He was inside the large rectangle. Penalty. So once again, Killian O'Connor will face Brian Kelly. And even though there's only a point between them, Marty, you'd have to say that Kerry were had the upper hand in this game out around the middle of the park the forwards were moving better the male forwards really haven't moved at all off screen they're just not making those moves and Aidan O'Shea I think that's his first key touch of the ball he's got and even his second touch wasn't good but it's ended in penalty last Sunday six days ago Killian O'Connor rifled the ball to Brian Kelly's right it was a brilliant penalty will Kelly anticipate that that's where he'll put the penalty part two round two Killian O'Connor, Brian Kelly. This time it's along the surface. The result is the same. Yeah, well, that's clever by Killian O'Connor, Marty, because there's no doubt in the world that Kelly would have been waiting for that, maybe in the same position as he hit it the last time. But same side of the goal, same dive by Kelly, but low and hard, and that's really the best place to put any of those balls. Great score, and Mayo might ignite in this game. Well, Killian O'Connor can take full credit, not alone for taking the penalty, for winning the penalty. Kevin McLaughlin, quick ball inside towards Alan Dillon. Little push in the back. Free in for Mayo. Yeah, protestations there by Shane Enright. He needs to be careful now. But I'm not sure if he picked up a yellow for that for that penalty tackle. Uh, he just needs to be careful. But it certainly was a, a free. And Alan Dillon coming more and more into this game. He's picked up two or three balls out around the middle. Picked up a good one inside and looked dangerous. 
There was no card shown to Shane Enright either, Tom. Well, that's what I was wondering. Mm. I was surprised, yeah, because he Black was... Black or yellow, yeah. as you say. Here's Killian O'Connor. Just about gets there. <laughs> Just about, I have to say. It did. It was just about. I think Kenny O'Connor was looking at it for a long time until it dropped over the bar because it was really close. And we have no Hawkeye, Marty. No. <laughs> we have lots of things here at the Gaelic grounds. We have the Artane band in full credit to Croke Park. They moved uh, everybody down here to the Gaelic grounds to make it a special occasion, as it is. David Moore going to take the free. He's looking, he is really looking for Kieran Dunn here. Dunne who to make a move, doesn't see it and gives a shot. Dunne can watch. Kieran Dunne is underneath it. Gathers it almost at the second attempt. He fouled it because he touched the ball on the ground. He was a bit unlucky. He can afford a smile. But Cormac Riley, the referee, is correct. He is correct. And if uh, Mayo were caught by surprise by Dunne, he the last day, that's certainly not happening today. And Catholic, doing really well on it. Long ball. Brilliantly gathered by Aidan O'Shea. He scored a cracker against Cork. He lays it off. It's O'Connor again, and Brian Kelly is there, but it's in the net. Kelly and O'Connor with his second goal in the space of about three minutes. What a catch by Aidan O'Shea. What a follow up by Killian O'Connor. But it's O'Shea's goal, really, because he created it. Yeah, and it was the catch because when he got the catch, Marty, he was turned inside. He didn't have to beat a man. A great run by Killian O'Connor. Two goals in six minutes. They say goals wins games. That certainly put Mayo on the driving seat. And there's a change in the Kerry defensive setup. Mark O'Shea is on, gone off. Is Shane Henright, who gave away the penalty, also picked up a previous yellow card, as Tom was saying. So this means from Emma Fitzmaurice's point of view an acknowledgement that they have a serious problem in the full back line uh, the serious problem is just actually after occurring right there now because Shane Enright picked up that yellow a manager will always be really nervous when he sees his player back one on one with another player they're in trouble ball is available Aidan O'Mahony somehow regathered it has to release the referee says too many steps and it's a free in from Mayo they are really piling on the pressure at the minute. I think they sense blood. They're going for everything. Once a Kerry man gets on the ball now, they're surrounding him. They're really choking the life out of the first half. We don't know what's going to happen in the second half. They may only be four scores to two, but two of those are goals, Martin. That's a serious lead now for Mayo. Another free for Killian O'Connor, who's already scored two goals and two points in this opening 22 minutes remember Mayo won the toss playing with a very strong breeze right down the middle blowing from goal to goal yeah, and favoring the Connacht champions and it's not, it's not as if they've used the breeze a whole lot they've been very controlled in their play they're moving it nice and snappy from midfield but as we mentioned at the outset it's easy to get the ball inside but a catch by Aidan O'Shea a foul by Shane Enright has really turned the colour in this game and Kerry now under pressure and from a position where they were where they were really holding the hold in this game they really had the upper hand at it No doubt about this one. Straight over the bar. Yeah, two, two, three after 23 minutes. Uh, what a score. Eamon Fitzmaurice looking a little forlorn out there. He's just wondering, what switches can I make? What do I do now? I brought on Marco Shea, one of my marquee players. I have Donaghy on the pitch. What else is left there to do? And the danger for managers is that he needs to do something quickly before the game totally runs away. Now. It's 11 minutes since Kerry scored. And only one man has scored from Mayo. His name, Killian O'Connor. Aidan O'Mahony. Anthony Marr. Sir Mark O'Shea. Lee Keegan. Going back to check here. Good anticipation by Seamus O'Shea. Alan Dillon. Where is Aidan O'Shea? Last touch off the Mayo man. 
Silent was, ball for Kerr. Aidan O'Shea should have clicked with the ball much quicker. That was a very lethargic run for the ball. Very poor effort for him on his behalf. He was waiting for the player to come into him and then gather. Mark O'Shea. Gun Fitzgerald. Aidan O'Mahony. Great pressure by Mayo. Little hand trip, however. Means it's a free for Kerry. Yeah, Mayo really applying the pressure and the tackle. They're really getting in on the ball, getting in on the player, not letting him look up and give those options. And the only thing Kerry can do at the minute is give short ball. Keith Higgins. First to the ball. Ahead of James O'Donoghue. Alan Dillon. Keith Higgins available. Andy Moran wants it long and high. But that's a little bit too strong. That won't cause Kerry any concern. Well, Andy Moran looked for that ball. It was actually nearly a good ball, but the wind just carried it and Keith Higgins coming off the pitch to deliver that. And you can see them looking inside, even from the beginning of the game, for those diagonal balls to Andy Moran all the time. Great catch, Anthony Marr. I just sense that Kerry needs scores now. They just need something to settle them down, something to get them going, give them a little bit of hope. They're struggling to do that, struggling to get opportunities. James O'Donoghue, long ball up first, Kieran Donaghy. Oh, he controlled it really well. He's heading to his goal. The referee has given him the free. Better quality ball. There are inspirational scores, Marty, but that was an inspirational catch, holding off the man with the right hand, collecting it with the left hand, and turning around and going for goal. He knows what's needed at this stage, and there was only one thing on his mind. Paul Ganey with the free, and the point. And certainly complete offset from the last day where we felt that Mayo just weren't in the game in the first 25, 30 minutes. It looks like now Kerry are just not in the game, but I certainly wouldn't write them off yet. Kick out from Robbie Henley. Johnny Crowley gets a touch. Killian Young gathers. Sets up Dunica Walsh. Diagonal ball is aimed at James O'Donoghue. Lee Keegan and Keith Higgins between them ensure that the Killarney Legion man doesn't get clean possession Jerk Africa Cullen Boyle Jason Doherty brought to ground by Donica Walsh I think he's going to get a card for that referee Paul McRiley certainly is indicating that, well he looked like he was going for his top mm. pocket then he says go on because that could have been a black card. Yeah, I hear a little bit of a boo from the crowd. They were expecting one as well, but I don't think it really matters. Mayo in total control at this stage. Cullen Boy. Andy Moore. Kevin McLaughlin. Barry Moore has gone inside. McLaughlin needs somebody outside him as such. It's Aidan O'Shea. Trying to get inside that carry cover. Queuing up. Donald Vaughan hits it, and that is to the left and wide. Now, well worked by Mayo. Donald Vaughan picking up a position on the outside left. Look, no loads of space, no marking whatsoever. You can see how tight that the Kerry defence are. They're all circled around right in front of the goal. Plenty of space on either sideline. Aidan O'Mahony tussling, but it's uh, David Moore that gathers. Peter Crowley to Paul Ganey. Good ball inside for James Adunahu. One against one with Keith Higgins. Shrugs him off and Keith Higgins responds and Donahue is there. Kerry are back in the match. What a score. It just came, came at the moment that they needed it. It's the first time in the game I see Keith Higgins taking his eye off James Adunahu. He crept inside him as he's capable of doing a Keith Higgins playing in front of Donahue all day and that situation with Donahue following up that's another inspirational scorer the game could take off Marty because it's been all Mayo so far wonderful defending by Keith Higgins wonderful finish by Kieran Donahue 
It's what Kerry, the monster champions, badly need it. Yeah, they need to follow up now, and Marty, they need the next two or three scores. It's no good if Mayo go down and get a score at the other end because it's at this stage where they need to win at half time at least three, four points behind, and then they can rally themselves again. And I don't want to be overemphasizing it, but there is a very strong breeze which will favour Kerry. I mean, you're Kieran Donaghy at the edge of the square in that second half. I think you'll see aerial bombardment as plan A from him at this marks. Mark O'Shea having a go. Uh, it's dropping in. Donaghy's underneath it. Gets away from Jerk Haverke. Donaghy is there. Flicks it back off the post. And waiting for this Tom Caniff. Like a good, steady cornerback. Right place, right man from a male perspective. Yeah, and done, he get the ball inside. The one thing you don't do is let the man turn you inside and get in along the end line. Good effort by John. Ooh, what a tackle. Colin Boyle is fouled. John Vaughan didn't quite like it. There's, there's a bit of afters going all the way to the wire here. And Dunica Walsh has now gone outside the ring. If this was the National Stadium in boxing. And Walsh hops back in quickly. All a bit unnecessary, but there is tension, and it's quite palpable. Yeah, There's a Don lot at stake. Donald Vaughan in a little bit of trouble. I see him here along the barrier, and he was the man that came rushing in when Donica Walsh was standing over the player on the ground. He looks in a bit of bother, clashed with the barrier. And the referee will take action on this occasion because he feels the game is getting a little bit out of control. Unnecessary, but it happens. So Donica Walsh and Donald Vaughan. Both going to be spoken to by the uh, referee. It's a yellow for both. Uh, I think that's a correct decision. That's all it warranted, really. Now they can get on with the game. It was a hefty challenge by Johnny Buckley initially. Meanwhile, back live. Kerry winner free. Mayo fans don't particularly like the decision of the Mead official. Yeah, Mayo just got a little bit scrappy, Marty. They're after taking their eye off the ball, excuse the pun, but they're, they're not really marking anybody. They're a bit scattered around the pitch. The only place they're marking is on their own full back line. Other than that, it's quite loose. Anthony Marr. Long ball coming, but it's a poor one from Marr. Sliced off his boot. Keith Higgins calls it, gathers it. Donald Vaughan available. So too Lee Keegan. And a red and green wave heads towards the city end. Andy Bourne did well. Slips a ball, Faris Allen Dillon. Mark O'Shea with him. Donald Vaughan is inside. Jason Doherty wanted the cross. Difficult angle. Killian O'Connor won't reach it. Ball is wide. One senses, Tom, that Mayo are stepping back a small bit because of Kerry gaining just a little bit of momentum. Mark O'Shea's arrival has added a steadiness. It's like as if Mayo went too far ahead too quickly and they've got lethargic in the game, the bit of composure is gone and they've left an opening for Kerry to come at them in this game and Kerry have just done that and nobody more capable of doing it than Kerry team. Ball loose and available. Five out of eight scoring chances for Mayo, four out of ten for Kerry. Picked off the ground, Aidan Omani, free to Mayo. Getting a little bit scrappy, but correct decision by the referee. It certainly was a free. I pulled off the ground or lifted off the ground. And Mayo getting very little return from Andy Moore on the full forward line at the minute. I'd expected that they might have put Aidan O'Shea in there. They did initially for five, ten minutes. Got a goal from it, but he hasn't been in there since and has been. Game has bypassed him a little bit. Killian O'Connor are going to take this. He's the only man to score from Mayo in this All-Ireland semi-final replay so far. That's an incredible statistic, Marty, really, with all the ball that has been up there. Young Footballer of the Year, 2011 and 12. He has matured and developed to be one of the best in the country. Wind assisted. This is gone to the left and wide. It's Mayo's fifth wide in a match. Disappointment for James Horn. This is a better angle, you can see it. Just curling. Should have been for the far over post, which is 
easy to say for me up here. Well, it is, but that's what all the good coaching advice goes is far side. Miss it on the far side if you're missing it at all. Loose ball available. Seamus O'Shea, Tom Kniff. Looking for a little bit of support. Aidan O'Shea. Three minutes, we believe, of additional time is going to be added on. Jason Doherty, front of goals. Takes his point. And that statistic has just changed to two male footballers have now scored. 2-3 for Killian O'Connor, one point. Jason Doherty. Yeah, there's a few male men queuing up. You can see them there in front of you, 3-4. And fairness, a ball before that that Alan Dillon didn't give. They were in the similar position. Mayo players a little bit annoyed that he didn't deliver, but certainly Mayo back in the attack again. Great work by Killian O'Connor. He's not waiting indeed for the soft ball to come in to him. He's willing to really work hard. It comes to Aidan O'Mahony. The support play is provided by Killian Young. Going long to James O'Donoghue. He's looking to get inside Keith Higgins, turning, twisting. He needs somebody immediately outside him. Killian Young calls. Is he capable of scoring from here? It's dropping, dropping over the crossbar. Killian Young, not known for his scoring prowess in Kerry or indeed nationwide, gets a peach of a point on his left foot. Yeah, Good score. A great score, and it took a long time for it to drop, but you're quite correct, Marty. James Lennon, who got the ball in the edge of the square, had no support until Killian Young came, maybe came a little bit slow. And Mayo lose possession. Paul Ganey, the referee, has gone for us. He felt the Mayo man was fouled. Kerry fans booing it, but I have to say, on initial viewing, we'll have a look at the replay, we'll see what you think, Tom. I think Cormac Riley was right. I think he was right. He'd been right on most calls. Yeah, close. Maybe it was out the middle of the park. I'm not sure would it have been given. Yeah, there is a shove. But in every tackle in Gaelic football, Mark, there, there, Marty, there is physical contact. Every single collision, there is physical contact. First touch by Doherty was poor. Anthony Marr came in. Peter Crowley has it now. David Moore. Donica Walsh in a lot of space. Mayo are back there in numbers. The long ball is aimed at Kieran Donaghy. It's Donaghy again. Look at the man outside. It's a dunno. It's a repeat of last Sunday. But this time Robbie Henley saves. But there is consternation from the Gaelic grounds in Limerick all the way to Ballantubber and Westport whenever the long ball comes in to Kieran Donaghy and this man, James O'Donoghue. And James O'Donoghue, because he's living off Donaghy at this stage, he's right underneath him every time and that's where he should be. Watching coming in, similar to his run last Sunday to get the goal, loses Keith Higgins in it. And great save by Henley to get down to that ball, but Mayo really panicking on the full back line, even panicking more so as the game wears on. Jason Doherty. Killian O'Connor, he's the main threat up front. Get their signals mixed up. Donald Vaughan. He's going for a second point. Jason Doherty hits it with the outside of the boot and it's over the bar. Good score, Jason Doherty. Ah, that was a super score by Jason Doherty because he had no options. Look at him looking up, he hits it with the right foot on the outside of the right foot, straight over the bar. Great score. And not a single forward in, in on the full forward line. And Aidan O'Shea, oh dear, oh dear, and Killian O'Connor had a collision, and both of them come out the worst for wear. That's they did a terrible because, pity. Yeah, it is, and both of them, with, but both of them will have to go off for uh, treatment because of blood substitution, but it happened because Killian O'Connor was waiting for Aidan O'Shea to pass him by oh. on his inside, oh, and you can see Aidan O'Shea going to the outside, and that's how the clash happened, they just didn't read each other's play. Fair play to Killian O'Connor, despite getting that nasty injury, he still made sure that Mayo regained possession. It was the full 38 minutes. We were told three minutes of additional time, but there might be more now. But uh, Killian O'Connor and Aidan O'Shea both picking up blood injuries. Kerry regained possession. David Moore. Donica Walsh. Paul Ganey wanted short. Kieran Dinney. Donaghy is at the edge of the square. He's taken up residence. Here comes Donica Walsh. They're available left and right. Walsh has to go back outside. Good defending by Mayo. It's available still. Kim Donaghy comes in. Robbie Henley is off his goal line. And that is a free out, surely. Picked off the ground. Outside the small rectangle by the keeper. And it is a free in for Kerry. Oh, that's a very opportunistic opportunity for Kerry. 
I would have thought I'd like to see it again, Marty, but the referee, very definite about it. A uh, little bit of barge in there, but great defending by Mayo, really getting back in numbers. But Kerry get inside that cover quite a bit. Yeah, and that's yeah, a correct decision. Side. Yeah, very good decision, and it's a uh, handy score. Paul Ganey gets his third point of the match. But again, Cormac Riley, to his credit, has refereed this match sensibly, and that was the correct call again. Yeah, he's made very few bad calls. Just three points between the teams. Two Killian O'Connor goals in the first half. Set them on their way. Only two male footballers have scored so far. Killian O'Connor in 2-3, Jason Doherty in 2. Kieran Donaghy has played a major role by scoring a cracking goal and bringing Kerry back into this All-Ireland semi-final replay. Mayo go down to the NS Road dressing room. Kerry go down to the city end. And right here, there's nobody leaving except perhaps for a cup of coffee. So don't go away. We'll have analysis right after the break. Halftime score. Mayo 2-5. Kerry 1-5. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, conceded Tom Parsons uh, seems to be introduced for the second half, wearing number 19. And uh, he's going to come in. He normally plays in midfield as he did last Sunday. There's a bit of uh, a welcome to the Ennis Road between the Kerry and uh, Mayo players, as you can see here. And the referee's attention has now been uh, brought to this scenario. And his umpires down at the, that end are going to have a brief consultation with him. That's uh, Sean Walsh and Ricky White, who are clubmates of the referee, are down there. So uh, we could have some more cards, depending on the colour here, about to be shown. And uh, referee immediately went to Mark O'Shea and having a serious word with him. Alan Freeman is one of the changes that seems to be there in the start of the second half. Tom Parsons was the one that I spotted initially, but Alan Freeman is there, so there's a yellow card. So a yellow card for Mark O'Shea. So a rather uh, passionate, hectic start. Let's see what happens. This is Alan Freeman who's just been introduced, and Mark O'Shea and Andy Morn was doing his best to calm matters down there and got entangled but uh, it's Mark O'Shea that's now on a yellow they're, they're cheap cards to give away Marty you know nothing to them really before the ball is thrown in before the whistle goes and you're on a yellow card you're better off putting in a good tackle to get a yellow card I can tell you Tom there's some confusion along the sideline here you can see here now where uh, there, uh, Aidan O'Shea needs some medical attention again and he's now on the ground uh, in uh, this position. The medical team are going to uh, do some more stitching up or watching that eye, that collision, that accident with Killian O'Connor. And uh, as a result, before the referee started the second half, James Horn informed the linesman, Morris Deegan, who in turn uh, communicated with the referee to hold on for just a few moments until Aidan O'Shea was sorted out. And he's doing that now. And I don't think it's... Uh, I think they're... Looking at him from the point of view of his head, his, the feet is up, it's not a leg injury. I think it could be from the head injury that he took just before the and whistle. Ki and, the and Tom Killian O'Connor is down here as well. So there's a bit of confusion, I have to admit, about the substitution at halftime. Tom Parsons is in, Alan Freeman is in, and it would seem that two central characters of this male team, Killian O'Connor, and Aidan O'Shea will not start this second half. Well, that would be amazing. And I think it's Barry Moore that makes way for Tom Parsons. I don't see him out there on the pitch, but yeah, total and utter confusion. Both players on the sideline. Mickey it, Conroy has been introduced as well. I can see him at wing forward. Uh, not a good start for Mayo. Oh, very disruptive start for Mayo. There's changes all over the place, and we wonder why Aidan O'Shea sees the out of this game. I think it's a touch of concussion. Here comes Seamus O'Shea, his brother. Bursting through the middle. They're leading by three at the break and they get the very first break. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We'll tell you more as we get uh, more news on the sideline exactly the reasons, but uh, I think, Tom, you're right. I think it's concussion is, is the problem. The two uh, lads are still here sitting on the chairs, as you saw a moment ago, and still getting some medical attention. The medical team being absolutely correct precaution obviously in their safety is number one meanwhile it's alan freeman who's been introduced 
and who also, by the way, we can now confirm is also on a yellow card. He's going to take the free. First big test for him, and he puts Mayo in front by four points. And we know that Alan Freeman, even if he started this game, he would have been the free taker, but he's a very reliable free taker, very reliable player, and he will certainly do a bit of damage. But my fear for Mayo defence is done here at full forward, and they will leak goals unless they tighten up back there. Nice layoff by Andy Moore and Kevin McLaughlin coming through at speed. The flick back as far as Moore. This would be a lovely one, too, but the finish is off target. And it's Mayo's sixth wide of the match. And if there is any team that control in the game so far, it's Mayo. They've won the last two kickouts out around the middle of the park. They've got a score. And they still have a huge amount of substitutions to go through. Here's David Moore. Good ball up first, Paul Ganey. As anticipated, the two men hovering. Kim Donahue and James O'Donoghue. But Paul Ganey won't be complimented with that effort. No, and that's like him, he usually does much better than that. I'd say Donahue a little bit annoyed that that didn't come in. He's been very effective. He has certainly been the pre-match switch so far this afternoon. Look at the wide cuts. Mayo leading on that front, which they won't be too pleased with. Paul Ganey. Nowhere to go, really. Somehow manages to get it back for his Dunica watch. Killian Young is sending in the first aerial bombardment in this second half. James O'Donoghue gathers. Trying to get away from Keith Higgins. Who's available outside? Calling for it is Johnny Buckley. Buckley tries to make an angle, coming through the middle. It's Aidan O'Man, who doesn't normally score in championship football, and he hasn't this evening either. No, he doesn't normally get scoring opportunities. He's named as a full-back, has been playing as a full-back very far up the field there, but Johnny Buckley laying that one on. has been very quiet in this game. He needs to come into it much more. Seamus O'Shea, Dunica Walsh, Jason Harrison. Tom Parsons lays it off as Jason Doherty. Well won. Andy Moore. Tripped by Fionn Fitzgerald. Now, what colour is the card? Deliberate? Black or yellow? I think going on past experiences it will be a yellow one I don't think it's sending off there seems to be a reluctance to set, give players black cars he's getting the black the carry captain is off but he can be replaced I think it's clear an example of a deliberate trip here here's the hand trip by a footballer we've seen in the championship I really think the referee did the right thing here and Andy, and, and Andy Moore really doing well to pick up that ball. He's customary go down on the ground, pick up the ball and get inside. Killian O'Connor is going to be wearing number 28. He's back on and he's coming across immediately to take the free. There's debate along the sideline with Aidan O'Shea and the management team. We'll tell you about that in a moment. Who's coming on for Kerry? Uh, we can, looks like uh, Barry John Keane, but I can tell you about more about that in a moment. Aidan O'Shea is still being kept in reserve. Barry John King doesn't normally play wing back, but uh, he's the player that looks like that's going to be uh, introduced in a moment. So Alan Freeman is the player that's gone off again. So that was a blood substitute, and uh, he took his point well. Meanwhile, the effort is gone to the right and wide. Off the boot of Kevin McLaughlin. Yeah, that's a poor effort by Kevin McLaughlin. But Kerry coming with a double substitution, Marty, and that should make a difference. They're plugging the defence and they're putting other attackers in up front. Uh, has become quite scattered, quite confusing in terms of who's on, who's off. Aidan O'Shea was on the sideline. He was actually pleading his case with the physio to go back on. So Kerry have introduced Parky Kenny. From Glen Bay, Glen Carr. He's on the field. He takes the place of Fionn Fitzgerald. 
Nicely nipping in as Killian Young. Pass didn't reach his destination. A little bit of extended holding by Kevin McLaughlin, preventing the free being taken quickly. David Morn again is looking around to see who's available. Peter Crowley, the nearest. Aidan O'Mahon, back to Morn. Slipping one through. Michael Ganey on the overlap. Peter Crowley. Kieran Donahue is waiting for the long high ball. James O'Donoghue takes the pass, shoots, and puts it between the posts for his second point of the game and his first in the second half. Great score by James O'Donoghue, turns inside, but he's so quick. All he needs is a little bit of space, and he delivers accuracy, he deliver, delivers length, slipping aside Keith Higgins. And Mayo, you feel over the last four or five minutes, from a personnel point of view, become quite unsettled. Robbie Henley's kick out goes straight out over the sideline, as you see, and it's quickly taken by Michael Ganey. It's a testing ball from Mayo. Up goes Kieran Donaghy. Fantastic catch. Here's a Dunno. He's brought down. Another penalty. Has to be. Surely. Yes. Keith Higgins can protest. So too can Donald Vaughan. But the all one two that worked for Donaghy and Colin Cooper for years is now working for Donaghy and James O'Dunno. Long high ball, fantastic catch by Donny. Here comes O'Dunno, penalty. And he's been doing it all afternoon. He's been the danger. Everybody signified it. James Horn knows about it. O'Dunno who knows about it because he's living off Donaghy at the minute. What an opportunity. Here's James O'Dunno facing Robbie Henley. Goal for Kerry. Sides are level in this All-Ireland Senior Football semi-final replay. Sides are level, Kerry are on the up, Mayo in a little bit of trouble. All the switches, all the changes, Aidan O'Shea still sitting down, don't see him playing any more part in this game. What a loss, it's going to take leadership for Mayo now. 36,256. Can you hear them wherever you are in the world? Because the chanting, the shouting, the roaring is huge. Donald Vaughan, fouled, free from air. Alan Dillon, Keith Higgins, Kevin McLaughlin. Level only twice in this All Ireland semi final replay. Nicky Conroy. Killian O'Connor. Fires Andy Moore back to O'Connor. Slipping one through. Tom Parsons. Overlap provided by Killian O'Connor. He shoots. Difficult angle. Good pressure by Kerry. Ball is wide. Yeah, good pressure by Kerry, but they're getting numbers back there, Marty. They sense there's an opportunity in this game. They just have to stop Mayo scoring any time they get those opportunities. They've become parity in the middle of the park. They're on top in defence. They've done here up front. You have to say the cards are stacked for them if it takes something special by Mayo. The carry kick out was just a little bit short. I'm not too sure it was outside the 20 metre line, which is uh, part of the rules. Mark Kilkenny. Mark O'Shea. Anthony Marr, James O'Donoghue, getting by Keith Higgins, they're double marking, Higgins wins the ball, fantastic defending by Higgins, 10 out of 10, super, Mickey Conroy, slipping one, Paris, Lee Keegan, but sometimes replays don't live up to the drawn games, but so far, this is turning out to be quite a thriller. And this half is really end to end stuff. Marty, both teams really going for it because both of them sense that this will be the last day. Don't see another replay. Don't see extra time on this. Both of them will go for it. Alan Dillon. Good ball inside. Kerry backtracking. It's Andy Moore under severe pressure. Sliding tackle from Alan Dillon. No free given. Dillon knocks it back. Peter Crowley had it momentarily. The tackles are ferocious. And Crowley cools matters down. That was Brian Kelly, Aidan O'Man. It's half an acre between himself and Dunica Walsh. Running by Michael Ganey. Diagonally. Held back. Long ball up. Breaking ball to James O'Dunno. And he'll take off. And away he goes. Brought down by Keith Higgins. Free in for Kerry. 
The dynamic duo of Donny and O'Donoghue are causing serious concerns. Yeah, absolutely lethal, and the referee gave the advantage there. The point is registered. Great play by O'Donoghue. He's really given Keith Higgins a time, but for Keith Higgins having to put the finger in the hole in the dam so much this afternoon, has played him so well, but O'Donoghue has been brilliant. What a catch. Anthony Marr. Killian Young. Giving it long. Inside is James O'Donoghue. Keith Higgins backtracking. Away goes O'Donoghue. What's he going to do? It's deflected out for a 45. And uh, the pressure coming on that Mayo full back line as we predicted it would, as everybody predicted would. Keith Higgins lost the ball in the sun. That's how Dunhu got inside. And every time that O'Donoghue has, a lot of the times that O'Donoghue won ball has been inside Keith Higgins because Keith Higgins has to take the chance and play in front of him. First 45 of the match. Kerry were down three points, a goal at half time. They now lead by one. Aidan O'Shea, final words of encouragement and tactical awareness from James Horn. And certainly Mayo could do with Aidan O'Shea around the middle of the field right now. I know that feeling, a player trying to plead his case to go on the pitch. As a manager, you know in your heart and soul he's not in a position to. And the medical advice is don't. David Moore. First 45, as I mentioned. It's swinging left and wide. Well, it's time to draw breath, Tom uh, Clark. Yeah, I wonder, Marty, are they making the decision for on Aidan O'Shea? He is certainly so keen to going. Hand up to the referee. They need him, Marty. They need him on that pitch if he's fit to go on it. Well, Aidan wants to come on, but uh, I think the male management are reluctant the medical team have obviously advised not to bring in Aid O'Shea What's going on? Ah, Kerry really taking control of this game they've won the last three balls out around the middle of the park they're getting free inside Mayo totally unsettled and here he comes they are bringing him. Mickey Conroy comes off Aid O'Shea is back on the field David Moore dropping this in. It's a great kick with the win. Knocked down by Kieran Donaghy. And James O'Donoghue wasn't far away. Yeah, that's surprising me, Martin. Those balls going in there, there's just one on one and one on one. Defender attacker, defender attacker. There's no Mayo defence coming back to take the breaking ball off of Donaghy. And they should be retrieving back there to pick up that ball. It's 12 and a half minutes since Mayo last scored. David Warren continuing on the form he produced in the first half in Croke Park six days ago. Ganey, Tamar, Killian Young available. Peter Crowley is another option. Look at the running by Marco Shea. 34 going on 17. Giving it back first, Peter Crowley. To Marco Shea. Can he score? Can he what? A man dropped at the start of this All Ireland semi final replay. There's no other way to say it. What about that for a character from the Gwaltuck man? Well, after all, he is the late Paddy O'Shea's nephew. Look at this for sheer heart talk. Absolutely brilliant stuff, Marty. But it's the running, it's the passing, it's the energy they're showing. They're pumped, Marty. They're really ready for the last 20 minutes of this game. It's all Kerry. Breaking ball picked up by Killian Young. Making himself available as Peter Crowley. He slips one through for his Dunica watch. Diagonal ball is aimed at James O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue knocked away by Big Tom Parsons. As far as Keith Higgins. Picked up by Seamus O'Shea. Colin Boyle is immediately to his right if he needs it. He doesn't. He's looking for the long ball. As far as Andy Moore, who's made a great run. But he's tackled. But the result, the quick ball cannot be dropped in. Quickly taken. Lee Keegan. Killian O'Connor. Dropping it in. It's a testing ball for the goalkeeper. He takes it, but the ball is dropped. And Andy Moore gets a touch. It stands, Marty. I was waiting for something there. No, but it stands. The green flag has gone up. An inspirational score. Another high ball kicked in on the edge of the square. Mayor back in this game. It's topsy turvy. It's back being anybody's. This should have been the keeper's ball. Kelly was under pressure. Fairly, it must be said. And there was just a touch from Andy Moore. What a, what a replay. Comes down first, Kim Donaghy. 
trying to get away from Jack Cafferty. Cafferty did well. Seamus O'Shea gathers. And the pendulum, the momentum, swings from Kerry back up to Mayo. In the twinkle of an eye. Aidan O'Shea has to go to scenic route. His strength and physique holding off the challenge of Johnny Buckley. Buckley is surely fouled. No free given. Ball picked up by Seamus O'Shea. It's heart stopping. It's non stop action. Yeah. Free from mail. Absolutely great stuff, Marty. It's as good as it was last week. Certainly, the second half is living up to the same billing as it was last week. I thought Seamus O'Shea was also fouled as he was getting the ball in it, but Cormac Riley reluctant to blow that whistle. And, and correct, he's right because the game is flowing. There's no malice in it whatsoever. Wonderful atmosphere. So, no matter where you are in the world, we hope you're enjoying this. Brian Kelly had it. He Kevin had McLaughlin put the pressure on. And really what should happen, Martin, in those situations, the keeper in any doubt whatsoever, he should just punch that ball back out the pitch. He didn't do so, and it has cost Kerry. And Captain Andy has brought his county back in to this All-Ireland semi-final replay. Battling for a place in the final on the third Sunday in September, September 21st. Remember, tomorrow we're live on the Sunday game with the other semi-final. Dublin, Donegal, sellout crowd, Broke Park. It's a feast of Gaelic football on RT television. And here comes David Moore. Aidan O'Shea, under pressure. Here comes Paul Murphy. A young fella that never played minor football for his county. But he's developed into one of Eamon Fitzmaurice's stars in 2014. Killian O'Connor. Lee Keegan. Andy Moore. Good pickup, despite the pressure of Park and Kenny. And Kenny comes away with it. It does very well to come away with it because Andy Moore had that ball and every time he's cut the ball he's gone to ground and turned inside but Kilkenny doing very well on that occasion. They look for Donaghy. Here's Barry John Keane laying it off first Peter Crowley. Here comes the big high ball. One against one. Donaghy is there. He has it again. Bearing down and goal. What's he going to do? Back to James and Dillow and it's over the bar. The, tra- the, 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 the traditionalists will love this game of football when you have Kieran Donaghy playing. Big high ball. Catching it magnificently under pressure. Layoff first. James O'Donnell, another point. Yeah, but you have two. You can have two tactics. You can fail quick and fast, as Kerry have done all summer. They just changed the tactic 15 minutes from the end of the game last Sunday, and they've applied it so well this afternoon. O'Donnell, really dangerous inside every time. Aidan O'Shea, scrambling. In comes Colin Boyle. Head down. He was heroic six days ago. And he's producing it again. Lee Keegan. Andy Moore. Park and Kenny trying to stay with it. Still Andy Moore. And he flicks it and he puts it over the bar. And Mayo are back in front. Well, like you say, Marty, the pendulum is swinging one way and the other. And it's the smallest little things that makes that pendulum swing. And a substitution being made. Declan yep. Sullivan, who I'd expect to come in on earlier in the game. Now there he is. Player gone off is Johnny Buckley. Referee is having a brief consultation with his umpires again. I'm not too sure whether he'll take any action. He's going straight to Andy Morn. And a fairness to Cormac Riley and the umpires and the linesmen, they've been working very well all together all afternoon. Correct decisions being made, common sense decisions being made, cards for the deserved. Kick out from Brian Kelly. Anthony Marr, outnumbered. Kevin McLaughlin. Good ball inside to Killian O'Connor. And that is over the crossbar. Marty, you have to look at that ball again from Kevin McLaughlin. Best ball of the game. Just from 40 yards straight onto his chest. Never broke stride. Kicked it with his right foot. There's two tactics in this game, Marty. Donaghy, O'Connor. That's all you're going to see for the next 15 minutes. Find those two men as quick as we can. It's riveting. Pulsating. About five, seven minutes ago, Kerry with the dominant team. In control. Now it's male. 
and this will go to the wire. They will look for Donahue every time, or Donahue or Donahue. It's easy to predict. James O'Donoghue pumping this one up into the air, dropping down towards Kieran Donahue. Lee Keegan is there, but the referee has blown his whistle, and he's given a free in for a foul on Kieran Donahue. I'm surprised at that. I'd like to see it again. Kaskirki goes across, both of them fighting for it, two of them challenged for it, no foul yet. Still no foul. Is it a pick-up? I think it must have been for the pick-up, Marty, because there was certainly no foul on the dropping ball. Another substitute. It's uh, Ricky Conroy is back on as uh, Kerry take the point. It's a goal and five points. James O'Donoghue has scored this afternoon and evening. And this, this game really could go anyway, Marty. It's just no telling the pattern to it. Kick out is a good one from Robbie Henley. Tom Parsons. Back out for Seamus O'Shea. Kevin McLaughlin. Easy ball, one back. Anthony Marr goes long. Tom Kniff leaves it behind him. But Keith Higgins is there. Kniff gives and goes. Aidan O'Shea fully recovered, thankfully, from that accidental collision with Killian O'Connor. Seamus O'Shea gets away from David Moore. Flicks it out first, Colin Boyle. Keegan calls for it this side. Kevin McLaughlin is unmarked at the moment. Chance for Jason Doherty. Scored twice in the first half. Has it the legs? Has it the accuracy? It's yes on both counts. Oh. Wonderful recovery by Mayo. There was never any doubt about that. He knew at the minute he left his boot, he turned away, he raised a fist to the crowd. Great play by Mayo, great play by Kerry. What a game, Marty. It's a super, super game. Some interesting information for your own kickouts. One uh, male, six out of 19. Carry, 13 out of 19. And I think that ties pretty much in the way we felt the pattern of the game was going, Marty. Here's another one of those kickouts. Breaking ball, Aidan O'Shea. Quick one, where is Jason Doherty? Kevin McLaughlin is making a run to his right. Conroy, looks sharp. Back for his Doherty. He's just scored. Oh, that's a good block down. Good defending by Aidan O'Mahony. Paul Murphy under pressure from Killian O'Connor. Still Paul Murphy. Good play by the Rat Moorman. Peter Crowley. David Moran. Anthony Ma. Kieran Donaghy is looking for it. And here is Donaghy. Rebound comes to Tom Kniff. Colin Boyle. Donald Vaughan, Tom Parsons, Seamus O'Shea. Back first, Kevin McLaughlin. Tom Parsons. Slipping one through to Andy Moore. Look who's intercepted. Tickling O'Sullivan. And this game is going to go on a bad pass or a break. Anthony Marr up first, Dunica Walsh. Crossfield ball is aimed at Barry John King. Tom Kniff right behind it. Still Barry John King. Good work by the Kerry man. The shooting is just a little bit off. And the ball is wide, but the referee has blown his whistle. And Mayo are protesting. But obviously the Mead official felt that Barry John King was fouled as he was kicking the ball. The problem here, Marty, is he was fouled while he was kicking the ball. He was fouled there. He was fouled when he got up and held back there. He got the advantage play, he got in his shot. I think that's a big problem, that's a real grey area. He got the shot, got the advantage, didn't take it. James O'Donoghue. It's straight over. One goal and six points for James O'Donoghue. Eamon for Smaris's team are only one behind. As Kerry introduced another substitute. He's the equaliser from last Sunday. Dr. Croak's man, Kieran O'Leary, is on for Michael Ganey. Nine and a half minutes left in the Gaelic grounds in Limerick. 
one point between the teams. Three times they've been level. David Moore surely being held. Referee had his arm up to indicate advantage. Long, high, dropping ball. James O'Donnell is chasing after it. It's O'Donnell. He'll volley it. Now the referee is going for another penalty. It's another penalty. Penalty. Unbelievable. As he was about to pull the trigger and let fly, he was held back. And Ger Cafferkey is the player that's called aside by the referee. Well, that penalty certainly could be a game changer. He's talking to Cafferkey. He's consulting with the umpires. Does it have to be a black if it's a foul in there? Let's watch this Both. again, Tom. Yeah, it goes in with the foot. Not sure if he makes contact with the ball. Mm, it's a 50-50, another it talking is. point, and we've had plenty of them. Not sure if he made actual made contact with O'Donoghue. I feel he made contact with the ball. Big call by Cormac Riley. It's still a penalty. It's still a possible game changer. For the second time in the second half, we have a penalty between James O'Donoghue and Robbie Henley. Same spot, not at all. Brilliant goal. Fantastic. The pride of Kerry. He is the man, James O'Donoghue. Two goals and six points for O'Donoghue. Two goals and four points for Killian O'Connor. It's a penalty extravaganza. I don't know who very clever going to the opposite side. Henry felt he was going to go to the same side. Great play by him. And the pendulum swings again from Mayo back to Kerry. Donica Walsh, ball bobbling all over the place. Gone down is Tom Parsons, free to Mayo. And the ball now like a piece of gold. Everybody going for a so important possession, so important for composure. Really important for Mayo. Keith Higgins. Andy Moore, surrounded. Good layoff, it's Conroy. What's he going to do? He scores a point. Good score by Conroy. Great score by Conroy. If it goes to extra time, Marty, uh, we'll, have, we'll have another 20 minutes. That's what's going to happen. I think we're going to have extra time in this game. It wouldn't be a bit surprised. We're heading that way. Well, I'm very happy here in Liverpool. <laughs> Enjoying this one. Kick out from Brian Kelly. Oh, Anthony Marr. Ball bobbling, ball available. In comes Conroy. Jersey pulled by Peter Crowley. Referee right beside him. And he will want to have a word with the Kerry number six. Well, I asked the question, is that a cynical out in the middle of the pitch as it is on the 14-yard line? In my book it is, but they tend not to give them the black cards out here. Uh, Cormac Riley, who has been consistent, now it's a yellow. But it could have been a black. It could have been black, but I suppose really academic at this stage when you can replace a player. Free is quickly taken. Oh, Paul Murphy. Wonderful catch. Referee gives him the free as well. Not easy to replace the legendary great Tomas O'Shea, who wore the number five for so many years. But this young fella, Paul Murphy, has produced the goods this year. Another young fella is Declan O'Sullivan. Killian Young. Kieran O'Leary. Slipping one through. Aidan no O'Shea. Has the situation read? Is that a foul and a layoff? Not too sure. We'll have to look at it again. Kieran O'Leary came in to challenge. Referee says no foul. Lee Keegan, surprisingly, may I add. It's Keegan. Looking around at options. It's Killian O'Connor. Dropping this in. It's tailing Andy Moore and can't get a touch. Ball is wide. Yeah, ball is wide. And I expect Killian O'Connor to kick it from here. So important that he uses his possession well, and he is the man. He's the man to get the scores for Mayo. They will look for him every time. Andy Moore is still on the pitch. We thought he'd have a 20 minute cameo in this game. He's been influential right from the beginning, and I feel he'll have a part to play yet. Well, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're enjoying this. I know Alan and Kira Murray are enjoying their wedding in the Broadhaven Bay Hotel in Belmullet and are indeed wearing their Mayo jerseys. 
I hope you enjoyed the rest of the wedding party and I hope you enjoyed the Saturday game. But wherever you are, what a match this has been between Kerry and Mayo. Sometimes replays disappoint. But this is pulsating. You can't take your eyes off it, can you, Tom? Yeah, and one of the things about this replay, because it's in Limerick, you might have felt that it would have taken the Croke Park factor away from it. It certainly hasn't done that. In fact, it's an advertisement for bringing it down to grounds like this. What a great game, great occasion. Pulsating atmosphere here, and the crowd really on their toes. Dermot Murphy, former Kerry keeper, with Eamon Fitzmaurice. Discussing. What yeah, the options a, are still down on that injury and that's O'Donoghue I think that's down there is it Marty yeah. it is and that's from the tackle with Aidan O'Shea the crowd felt there was a foul he was over physical in it and he certainly would be a loss for Kerry struggling a little bit has been down since that tackle and no doubt if he can at all he'll resume he's been a hero all afternoon what a tally of scores behind his name Cormac Riley ensuring that he can continue on. Keith Higgins and James O'Donnell, sporting men through and through, can even afford a little smile in this tension packed match where the biggest prize of all is a place in the All Ireland final against Dublin and Donegal, or Donegal, at stake. Mayo introduce another substitute. This is Kevin Kane, who played cornerback last year, two years ago in the All-Ireland final. Kieran Donaghy giving him a wry smile. The old-fashioned way that cornerback fullback comes on and says hello to the full forward. <laughs> Very traditional, two managers now racking their brains to see can they make one last little move to Tom, make the difference. Tom Parsons back to Lee Keegan. Free to mail. Option is to go short for Aidan O'Shea. To Mickey Conwell, Mark O'Shea, still Conwell, laying it off for Jason Doherty, he's already scored three times. Aidan O'Shea, to Tom Parsons, Andy Moran is unmarked. Declan O'Sullivan is now playing almost as corner back. Back outside, Lee Keegan, oh dear, never anywhere near the goalposts. No, poor effort by Lee Keegan, really shouldn't have shot, he was trying to screw it off the right-hand side of his right foot. Didn't work for them, wasted opportunity. Marco Shea down injured and he's looking for attention. Not sure how injured he is. Because Kerry need a breather, they need possession, everything's so important. Next kick out is crucial, as they all are. Kerry have been winning most of them. Just to tell you as well that Jonathan Lyon has come on for Dunica Walsh and the change uh, in the attack although Jonathan Lyon is able to play wing back as well but if Mark O'Shea has to leave it would be a huge loss look at the clock on your television screen 69 minutes and ticking Kerry 3-11 Mill 3-10 Mark O'Shea, David Moore. Who's available? Anthony Marr. Mark O'Shea fully recovered from injury a moment ago. Pat Kilkenny. Mayo want the possession. Young Kilkenny needs a bit of help. He does it all on his own. Whereas David Moore. Ball first, Kieran O'Leary. He scored the equalising point. Crossfield ball first, James O'Donoghue. The one two with Barry G. John Keane. James O'Donoghue wanted outside him. He goes for the score and it is well wide. There are now 10 seconds left in playing time. How much time will be added on? Is there enough for possession? Mayo have to regain possession here and try and force an equaliser. Last week it was Kieran O'Leary. This week it's Mayo that need possession and they've got it. Kevin McLaughlin goes law. Brian Kelly comes off his goal line. He punches clear. They have to regain possession. Mayo don't have it in a way. Come carry. No foul on Killian O'Connor. Peter Crowley has it. David Moore. We're deep in danger time now. Still David Moore. Holding Free on, to carry. Holding on to possession is crucial, Marty. That's all Kerry are doing and that's all they need to do. 
but I think Mayo will get another, another opportunity Killian O'Connor looking for a free there was a 50-50 could have been given but in the spirit of the game I think Cormac Riley made the correct decision long ball good ball David Bourne Young Keane Gary John back outside first Kieran O'Leary same position as six days ago when he scored a point to level the match this one is wide two crucial wides for Mayo two crucial opportunities for Kerry does that keep Mayo in the game does that keep them with an opportunity of levelling this game and bringing it to extra time referee will give them a chance Cormac Riley looking at his watch three minutes time added on but Mayo have about a minute and a half to get an equaliser and force extra time Donald Vaughan Michael Conroy says leave it to me Conroy gone through as Donald Vaughan he scored in the past this is the most important kick of his career or fisted pass it's over the bar Mayo and Kerry are level again who could have predicted a finish like this again it's seldom you get them two in a row what a score what composure from Mayo everything now surfacing effort hunger need want spirit character we've had it all and it will all unfold and more of it will unfold in the last minute next score surely will win this game level for the fourth time who can get the winner in the last 45 seconds or so it's a free for Mayo Killian O'Connor inside the 45 metre line 72 minutes 24 seconds when they have a goal he's looking at James Horn as they do and bring it up. Yeah, they're going to have a goal, Marty. Yep. And it's going to be a long one. They need to knock it dead. They're bringing up Robbie Henley, the goalkeeper, to take the 45. Well, it's a 45 metre free. But this surely is the last kick of the game. 72 minutes, 44 seconds. In, in case you're from Kerry or indeed from Mayo and you can't watch the television screen. And Robbie Henley, goalkeeper from Brafey, going to take this. If it goes over the bar. Mayo are in the All-Ireland Football Final. This is an all or nothing, Marty. No. James Horn can barely watch. Here is Henley. It's good. Has it got the legs? Up goes Donaghy. Fists it away. Surely the referee blow a whistle. And we have extra time. Oh, my God. <laughs> but you know what, Tom Carr? Both teams actually deserve it, and so do we. Because Gaelic football has been absolutely exhilarating the last two Sundays thanks to these two wonderful teams and once again Mayo go to the dressing room at the Ennis Road Kerry go to the dressing room at the City End and we have 20 more minutes of this wonderful game on the Saturday game let's look at the full time score Kerry 3-11 Mayo 3-11 so Mayo are playing from left to right as we look at it in other words with that uh, wind Advantage in the first period of extra time, 10 minutes. A most enjoyable, invigorating afternoon in the city of Limerick. Yeah, I don't think any major changes. Mayo full back line, lining out as they did. Kerry full forward line lining out as they did. I just see Tom Richie Feeney is on. He's playing centre half forward. Ball is thrown in. First period of extra time is underway. And away we go again. Doing all the hard work, trying to get a little bit of space. As uh, Jonathan Line loses out ultimately. Jason Doherty dropping this ball in but still pose problems for Kerry fisted away on this occasion Richie Feeney will be happy to see it out over the end line or sideline I should say Richie Feeney good ball nice turn great score it's that man again Killian O'Connor what a great score he caught it but what a great ball super ball in between three Kerry players delivers a nice simple pass looks to kick off his left turns on his right doesn't even have a look he's had a super game what a part he's played all afternoon kick out from Brian Kelly superbly gathered by David Moore 
Barry John Keane makes the run into space. Probably rushed his shot just a little bit too quickly here. James Adeno is on it. Keith, Kieran Donaghy. Good anticipation by Lee Keegan. Tom Parsons, far as Michael Conroy. Still Conroy, giving a little bit of space. Ball inside to Jason Doherty, surely being held by Aidan O'Man. He runs on to Kevin McLaughlin, and that is over the bar. It's McLaughlin's first point in this All-Ireland semi-final replay, and it puts the Connacht champions two points in front. Nice control play, nice compose play, but Michael Conroy, who has been playing a bigger part even in the latter half of the second half, is coming into this game. They're free. You can see the fresh legs, Marty. He has them. Barry John Keane has them. Tom Parsons has the fielding ability. Alan Freeman makes the diagonal run, and look at Freeman here. Well spotted by Parsons. Coming through the middle, it's Keegan! And good covering by Peter Crowley. And he picks up an injury. Crucial covering by Peter Crowley, but that certainly had goal written all over it. And a five point lead after three or four minutes and extra time is a massive lead. And I think it's cramped as much as anything else. We'll see a fair bit of evidence of that now over the next 20 minutes. Players picking up cramps. No matter how fit they are, when you're at this level of tempo and in speed and endurance, you will get cramp. Good covering, as we mentioned, by Peter Crowley because Lee Keegan was. Just fingertips away. Oh, he was from in there. Gathering the ball keenly. He, he was in there, and what a difference a goal had made would really suck the air out of a team. And Mayo certainly have started much more brightly. Kerry yet to find their feet in this 10 minutes. And it's all been quite traditional, Marty. The kickouts out to the middle of the park, man on man. Not many, not much evidence of blanket defences. It's just players getting back, working hard. Knocked away by Anthony Marr. He's judged to have been fouling. So it's another free for Mayo. Seamus O'Shea. Knocked down. Clever play by Kerry, down for his park, Kilkenny, who's played well since being introduced in the second half. Aidan O'Mahony, one of the two 34-year-olds for Kerry, now playing in the full back line, Mark O'Shea being the other. Anthony Marr has the time to recover. Declan O'Sullivan, Marr again available. Kieran Donaghy is waiting for the high-dropping ball. And it arrives. Little push by Kevin Kane. Spotted by the referee. Oh, that's a very harsh decision. Two players, he's allowed to challenge for that ball. Watch it as it's dropping, both of them. In fact, he's in front. Oh, I see nothing. And the whistle had even gone before that. There's no free there, Martin. Soft free, as Kevin Keane's nodding in the head, would seem to concur with our words. Because in, in fairness to Cormac Riley, he's been letting a lot of play go and to pull for that one, that's really harsh. Simple tap over point for Barry John Key. Gives, gives Kerry a foothold in this 10 minutes, which they needed, because it had a little bit of a danger that it might run away from them. Mayo, two points. Yeah, I mean, we see it there again, Marty. Mm. I, don't, I just don't see it. Peter Crowley read the situation well. Paul Murphy. David Moore. Kieran O'Leary. Easy for Keith Higgins. James O'Donoghue not following up. And Keith Higgins continues. Tom Parsons. Conroy. That's a good ball in towards Alan Freeman and Marco Shea was trying to keep an eye on the full forward from Ahamor. And that is the second 45. Crucial toe put by Marco Shea. He just got his foot into it and Freeman, if he had collected that ball, he had a great opportunity. But Marco Shea, the old head for the road, 
brilliant play showing his experience scoring opportunity for Mayo but one of the things I see Mayo doing is lofting in similar ball into the square as Kerry are doing but they don't have it done here inside it's a little bit of a waste of time they need to run the ball He's already scored 2-5. Including a penalty. And a uh, rather nasty cut over his right eye. And in collision with his teammate, Aid Moshe. Hits this well, but it's gone to the left. Remains a one-point game. As we head towards the seventh minute of the first period of extra time. Yeah, normally a free take would be looking for somebody to come short give him a ball back on that occasion mental tiredness could be kicking in at this stage Tom Parsons great catch available to his right is Kevin McLaughlin McLaughlin cuts in hits it well but again just to the left and wide and all those wides are so crucial they're crucial for both teams keeps Kerry in it they're crucial misses for Mayo because they need those scores and, and Kerry will get a purple patch at some stage. It's been all Mayo since the beginning of this half. Kerry will get their opportunities and they may make more of it than Mayo are making at the minute. The Gaelic grounds in Limerick, one of the best facilities indeed in Munster. The floodlights are now on for this extra period. Jonathan Lyon. Declan O'Sullivan in space. Tom Parsons, Lee Keegan in hot pursuit. Still Declan O'Sullivan, getting by several challenges. Flicks it inside to Barry John Keane. Available to his right is James O'Donoghue, but Colin Boyle, his touch have been fouling. Colin Boyle is explaining to the referee exactly the challenge. And let's see if he's right. And Colin Boyle replay. is absolutely fuming. I mean, there is no foul there. That's two frees for Kerry. Neither of them deserve to be going in terms of the pattern of the game. The crowd really annoyed with that. Colin Boyle really frustrated, puts Mayo back on the back foot again, two handy frees for Kerry. Barry John Keane with his second tap over point. Sides are level again for the fifth time in this exhilarating semi-final replay. And it won't be for the last time, Marty. And the substitution is now being made. Loads of them. They get as many fresh legs on that pitch as they can. Brendan Harrison is now on for Donald Vaughan. Kick out from Robbie Henry. Knocked out. Picked up by David Moore. Jonathan Lyon. Gives it first Kieran O'Leary. O'Leary looking to see where Donaghy is. James O'Donoghue is the target. Flicks one in, Faris Kieran Donahue, he's going for the overlap. Good defending on this occasion by Mayo, but they kind of get their signals mixed up. But they get the benefit of Kieran Donahue, I think, touching the ball on the ground. And good luck to you, Kevin Keane, if we're going to try and get the ball off Kieran Donahue, because he is holding on for dear life. No, and really, he should be releasing that ball. Shouldn't be allowed to play the ball on the ground. Mayo want to get it going as quick as possible. And Cormac Riley will add 20 yards. Not much good to Mayo really in those situations. Not much of a punishment. Kieran Donnie's achieved what he wanted, delaying the, delaying the game, allowing his defence to get back. A bit of sportsmanship. Keith Higgins. Richie Feeney is available. Mickey Conroy. Good defender. In comes Peter Crowley. Mark O'Shea was so, so tight on Mickey Conroy. And he's there again, just about recovered. Thank you, Kenny. Mark O'Shea, his experience, a vital component. To give it to Kilkenny. Kilkenny wins a free. Just outside the carry half of the field. And that's what happens, the fouls go in, the lazy fouls go in, her players get tired, and I'm looking at Kevin McLaughlin, he's literally not here to run another wrench. Barry, Barry John Keane, sorry, Tom, ball in towards Kieran Donaghy. No free. Oh, yeah, and there's a lot of angst among the crowd for some of the decisions made in that half. 
but a few of the players really out on their feet Marty I'm looking at Kevin McLaughlin he went to run to make a tackle he actually couldn't move looked at the sideline not much left in him well after a first period of extra time guess what in the Gaelic grounds in Limerick it's level Kerry 313 Mayo 313 don't go away we'll be right back welcome back to the second period of extra time Kerry and Mayo are still at it at the Gaelic Crowns in Limerick. And it is now 10 past 7. The game started at 5 o'clock. Here comes Jonathan Lyon. Can he put Kerry on their way? What about that first score? From yeah, he, can, he can with style, Marty. What a great score. And Kerry are after starting in a similar fashion that Mayo did. Seamus O'Shea out to the middle of the park. The Kerry duel as they started this game, finishing it like an Anthony Matter and David Moore. Anthony Marr gets his fingertips to it. Look at Aidan O'Mahony. Bravely going down on the ball. And he now knows that he's already injured and he's in trouble here. Yeah, and, and judging by his body language and the frenziness of his wave into the sideline, he's in trouble. Meanwhile, Declan O'Sullivan takes the free quickly. David Moore trying to get inside that Mayo cover. Brendan Harrison can't prevent him from taking the kick. Kieran Donahue comes out to gather and does it the second attempt. Half of Mayo is around him. Ball is free. It's there for Mayo. And good defending. Yeah, great defending, especially for Donahue inspiring fear among the Mayo defence all afternoon and he did come up with that ball but they didn't let him away Lee Keegan Aidan O'Mahony is obviously suffering from crap just outside the camera at the moment and the referee now as you can now see it has uh, called to play because Aidan O'Mahony can't move with crap and indeed Tom it's a point you were making about fitness and he's uh, such a powerful, strong, passionate player. He went into the challenge, but he knew immediately he was in trouble. Yeah, well, you're going to see loads of that over the next few minutes. Mayo players down with it as well. Not just Aidan O'Mahony. So Brian Sheehan is going to be introduced. Aidan O'Mahony would seem to not be available for the remaining eight minutes or so in this extra time period. Well, he's certainly gone. And it's who to replace him. And really positions, tactics, totally gone out the window. It's a scrap per possession, scrap for a scoring opportunity. And who has the talent and skill to take those scores? Throw ball going to be between David Bourne and Aidan O'Shea. Carl Barrett going to be introduced. And coming off is Colum Boyle, who also seems to uh, be in a spot of bother and I have to say he deserves to be tired he has given it absolutely everything yeah and has been exceptional right throughout the 80 and 90 minutes super here comes Aidan O'Shea being pursued by Killian Young Aidan O'Shea stepping in is there anybody there for the pass hefty challenge Paul breaks first David Moore no free given Moore spotted that there was a man available that's Pat Kilkenny. Jonathan Lyne laying it off for as Brian Sheehan. Heading towards the Mayo 45. Sheehan gone for the return. Barry John Keane gives it to Kieran O'Leary. It's dropping. Kieran Donahue is underneath it. No, he's not. Ball is wide. Oh, yeah, and Kerry looking much more energetic than Mayo. Mayo really out on their, on their feet. Some of the older players. Very tough. O'Shea going through, was it a shoulder to shoulder? Cormac Riley, the most important man to make that decision. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good in keeping along with the game. Kick out from Henley. Gathered and laid off quickly. Kieran O'Leary fouling. Chris Barrett. Aidan O'Shea. Mickey Conroy. Richie Feeney available. Still, Conroy has to go back and try and get a little bit of support Richie Feeney takes his eye off it gathered by Anthony Marr Killian Young 
Brian Sheehan available in space making a dashing run over to this side is this man Barry John King Kieran Donaghy is hovering around the house Barry John King drops it in and the ball is wide and there's a sigh all the way down to Ken Mayer and back oh that was so close Marty it looked over and if it was it would have been a killer one but Barry John King has been so influential in the 25 minutes he's been on the pitch Mark and Tom Kniff who's been here all afternoon enough ball into a fresh pair who's playing on a guy who's been or a player who's been here on the beginning that's tough going Palmer and you Crowley. know and you know when you're marking him he has the legs on you Palmer Crowley looking like he has crap as well a wonderful catch by Anthony Mark lays it off and then gathers it again free is quickly taken Mark O'Shea good ball up for his Paul Ganey lovely skill by Ganey under pressure hits it fantastic point by Paul Ganey one of the scores in the game and we've had so many of them and, and, and so many from him that must be his fourth or fifth he rode two tackles to take that such strength at the end of the game and to be able to pull it over it looks like Curry is going to need something special from Mayo certainly possession now Kenny sport pointed again and here come the Connacht champions two points down three minutes approximately in 30-40 seconds left still time Look at the pressure from Kerry. Brian Sheehan. Gives it down the middle. Good work by Jonathan Lyon. Survives the challenge. Has the composure to spot a man available, Paul Ganey. Brian Sheehan. Jonathan Lyon was available again. But Brian Sheehan, uncharacteristically, went for his own score. I shouldn't have done that. Had the pass on to his right hand side to line. Could he have given it? Three minutes left in the second period of extra time. Ball down towards Richie Feeney. Superbly gathered. Great defending by Kerry and by Mark Griffin. Substitute. That was the only ball that he had to win and he won it to his credit. Declan O'Sullivan. Jonathan Lyon Kieran O'Leary Kerry happy to retain possession Anthony Marr Brian Sheehan the clock ticks towards the 18th minute or the 8th minute of the second period of extra time still Declan O'Sullivan Paris Jonathan Lyon stepping inside giving himself a chance to take a shot and put it over the bar Jonathan Lyon has arrived with two brilliant points in the second period of extra time. And Kerry lead by three now. And Kerry are full of running. It's as if they've just begun the game, but it's easy to do that when you're staring at victory right in front of you. Three points up, a few minutes left, playing against a really tired team. May have nothing left. It looks like the end of the road for this heroic Mayo team. Marty. Lee Keegan is out on his feet. Chris Barrett wants to take the free quickly. The goal is the only thing for Mayo. They need to put the ball in there quickly. Killian O'Connor, the only man who's capable of getting it at this stage. It's a testing ball for any defence. Oh, comes magnificent David Moore. Lays it off for his Killian Young. Stepping into the Mayo half of the field. Mark O'Shea. Brian Sheehan. Back first, Kieran Donaghy. He's obviously been told by Eamon Postmaris, go back and defend. But in nips Keith Higgins. It's a goal or nothing at all from Mayo at this stage. 53 seconds left on the clock. Anything is possible with these two teams. Bursting forward is Alan Freeman. He's brought down. It's a free in for Mayo. It is only a goal. All Kerry have to do is keep this game stopped delay it, get back on the line and if Mayo need to go, they looked up at that stage they didn't even have a player in in the, uh, in the box Marty, so they're not going to get a goal without a player in there getting a little bit out of control, frustration from Mayo 
temper is becoming frayed. This is ugly and indeed unnecessary because since five o'clock this has been played in a very sporting manner. And the referee, Cormac Riley, really has to take control here because what was simple shoving and pushing has now turned into an all-out brawl which is unsavoury and doesn't in any way reflect the sporting game that we had last Sunday and indeed as well here. There's an official involved yeah, here as well. Mer is Mer Fernes is in the middle of it. No, this, is this is very messy stuff, Marty. We can do without this. And yeah, it has been a very sporting game and Ferns both teams due credit to them. We now have uh, a little crowd control issue because we have a fan that needs to get off the pitch. And more uh, supporters need to be escorted off the field. And it's certainly a pity it's finished like this. There's, there's a big man making his way onto the pitch. It's taking a few to hold him back and he's not happy. Crowd are not happy, very unsavoury incidents. And reinforcements, reinforcement being called for. And all this just serving to delay the game. And certainly I can understand Mayo's frustration. I did feel in the first half of extra time the two frees went against them. They wouldn't be happy with that. So, the referee, what is he going to do now? Well, Marty, what can he do really? I mean, there's, there's 20, 22, 23 players I think I counted involved in the skirmish. And you can't take one out of that. He's well off, just give the free. Get on with the game because it really is academic at this stage. I mean, the game is over. What he's going to add to this, we don't know. It still won't be enough. And Kerry, really, the, the fitter team, fresher team, more energetic. Well, in the last 10 minutes, th that would have to be said, to be honest with you. But then, what is the referee going to do here? He's had his conversation with Morris Deegan and Fergal Kelly. And it's, uh, it's the colour of the card. And indeed, who is he going to speak to? One step to O'Sullivan, I think. Well, what will hurt Declan O'Sullivan is a straight red card because this... Kieran Donaghy is the one that... Uh, he has uh, isolated. The only thing he needs to. to avoid is a straight red. It's a yellow card. No, it makes no difference at this stage. Yeah, no. It means nothing. Is there any stroke of luck left for Mayo Marty that they might be able to get this into the back of the net? Hard to see it. Well, there uh, are just three Mayo players outside the Kerry 45-metre line. They're the only three footballers and in that side of the pitch, everybody is in around the goal mount. So and that's that's 26 players in around the goal mount, Marty. And this certainly won't go straight into the back of the net. If it does, it'll take about 10 deflections. <laughs> Anthony Marr is now on a yellow card. Not that that's relevant at this stage. The uh, free has been pushed near the goal posts, near the chance for Killian O'Connor. And Killian, I've no doubt, asked Cormac Riley what was left in this game. He's making the decision in his head. Would we have a chance for two more scores after this, or is this it? This is the moment. Here comes Killian O'Connor. He's going for it. Has to be a goal. Stopped. Killian Young has it. And the ball comes out with Brian Sheehan. Right beside him is Kieran O'Leary. So too is Barry John Keane. In the middle is Paul Gainey. And there's nobody else around. Here comes Kevin King. Never took his eye off the ball. Is there one charge left for Mayo? Everybody, all 36,256 people on their feet here. Keith Higgins, ball inside towards Lee Keegan. Here's Alan Freeman. Is he brought down? It surely is another free. And the referee, Cormac Riley, has blown his whistle. But there's yeah. a bit of afters going on again. There's Killian O'Connor reaching out for the ball with his foot, caught a player. And this is totally getting out of hand, but we're careering towards an inevitable end and a Kerry victory. And there's another free from Bale. Robbie Henley, goalkeeper, has come forward this time as well. The drama continues. Well, it's palpable, but... And while the game was played in a sporting manner right throughout the afternoon, there was elements of tension throughout the game, but a good positive tension in the game. I'm not excusing the behaviour of this, but you can understand the frustration having put in... Oh, we're right for Kidna O'Connor. 
It's a red card yeah. for Killian O'Connor. Yeah. He did just as he was going for the ball. It was just in frustration. We might see it again. Unlucky, but a deserved red card. There is now nobody in the male half of the field. Bobby Henley is running down. What you see is all 28 players, I can now tell you, around here. Kieran Donaghy comes away with it, not very far. Referee blows the ball, and Russell! And Kerry are in the All-Ireland final on the 21st of September. The battle is over. The kingdom rejoice. Heartbreak from Mayo and James Hoyt. Absolute heartbreak. Your heart would go out to them. And you know, many, many, many years ago, not something too dissimilar, 91, and it, Dublin and Mead, four games. We had so much excitement here this afternoon, but I can certainly understand their feeling. They gave it absolutely everything. Probably a tired Mayo team, Marty. Kerry had the energy, they had the fitness, they had the players, they had the bench. All of them made a contribution. Well, the scenes there in the last uh, five, six minutes were totally unacceptable. It ended ultimately with uh, Killian O'Connor getting a red card and Kieran Donny being shown a yellow, but uh, unsavoury. But that uh, shouldn't indeed dominate because over the last uh, two hours or more, this has been played in a very sporting manner. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll be talking points, but they're much more exciting and crucial talking points than the malaise that we saw. There was only a byproduct of the tension, byproduct of the occasion, and the end for a Mayo team, and, and possibly the end for a few of those players on a Mayo team. The beginning for some of the Kerry players, fresh team, and they go to Crow Park with no fear whatsoever of the opposition. And tomorrow, certainly, that opposition will be answered. Fantastic character by both teams, it must be said. And as uh, we've mentioned, huge heartbreak for Mayo, but for Kerry, they've come through uh, an amazing journey when they were tested so many times and produced it in the second period when their fitness seemed to be that little bit better. Yeah, their fitness and their, their composure because the scores that they took, the last two or three scores were very good scores. They were work scores. Uh, the problem for Mayo is they didn't have that little bit of creativity and they didn't have it because they didn't have the energy to get into the positions or support the ball. They had given absolutely everything. And you can see both sets of players running to shake hands with each other. The sporting manner is still there among them. This will all be forgotten. The Malays will be forgotten. They mean nothing. What a year for Raymond Fitzmaurice. What First. a year indeed for Raymond Fitzmaurice. Because after extra time in this replay, there is the full-time score. Kerry in the All-Ireland final on September 21st. Full-time, after extra time. Kerry, 316. Mail, 313.